Over the next few weeks, you're going to hear about all kinds of changes. And here's what I need our church to do. I need you to embrace change. What that means is this. I didn't get an applause, so I'm going to keep going. <laughs> what I need you to do is saying, what's next? We're not looking back. We're moving forward. And in looking forward, we can have the anticipation of God is sovereign and God can work and God is going to use this church. And if we do not believe that, we are in the wrong church. I believe God has a great future for this church. Amen. Somebody give me an amen. Because we started this series called I Serve. And what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about some other ministries. And the end of that scripture is found in verse 16 of Ephesians chapter 4. It says this. I'm going to read it quite a few times today. It says, From whom the whole body is joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working which every part does its share. What happens? It causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. When every part does its share. It causes growth to the body. And when we talk about the future of our church, we're talking about our church. We're talking about your church. We're talking about where you get spiritually fed and where you can serve and you have chosen to put God in your life. This is your church. This is my church. But more importantly than that, it is his church. Everything that we do and everything that we have spiritually is because of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And just like Ashley said, so often I try to take God out of infamy. And I try to put him into this little box that I can understand. And I have to remember, he is the creator of the world. And I cannot put God in my box. In my understanding. What I have to do is I have to say, Lord, I am in your will. What do you want me to do? So change is inevitable, and I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. So I want to read a text to you again. It's found in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16. When we're talking about the church, we're talking about the body of Christ. We're talking about the institution that Jesus Christ died for, and he gave it to us, the church, that he is the head of, that our job is, is to manage and to be the voice piece for God into a community. And it's not just something that we go to church. We are the body of Christ, and we are supposed to minister to every person. So in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 16, it says this. It says, this is God. He says, and he himself gave some to be apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God to be perfect man. To the measure of the statutes of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried from every wind of doctrine. By the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, and that is Christ, for whom the whole body, joined and knit together by what every joint supplies, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body of the edifying of itself in love. We are made to build his church. We are made to build his church. God made each and every one of us with unique talents, personality skills. And when he, Jesus saved us, he gave to us that one spiritual gift that we can serve each other. God uses men and women that in our own personalities, in our own thoughts, we may think I'm not good enough or I don't have my talents. I listed three of those men. And you know these men very well. The first man was Moses. He didn't think he was a leader or a speaker. But God worked through Moses to bring Israel out of slavery. Moses was scared. He, he didn't know what to do. and He didn't really want to do it. But God 
commanded him and told him and equipped him to take care of this business. And Moses, being shy, said, hey, if this is what you want me to do, I'll do. And David, one of the kings of Israel, was the youngest of his family. His dad didn't want him to be king. Matter of fact, he had all these other brothers to come out in front of him. And he said, no, 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 no. And the youngest of all the sons stood up before Samuel, and Samuel anointed him the next king of Israel. Two chapters after that, David faced Goliath and defeated Goliath. A few years after that, he became king. A man that in position was insignificant. But God does not look at our personality. God does not look at our stature. What God looks is a heart. And if we have a heart and we can serve God, we can be like David. And we can say, Lord, I am not much. My brothers are bigger, they're stronger, they're more talented. But God doesn't look at that. God looks deeper in the heart. And then you go to the New Testament. You see a man that was a persecutor of the Christians. He hated Christ. He hated the church. He hated the disciples. And he would do everything within his power to persecute the Christians and cause shame to Jesus. But one day, on the road to Damascus, he encountered Jesus. And when he encountered Jesus, everything in his life changes. Everything. And now he's the most revered man in the New Testament. He wrote more books in the New Testament than anybody else. He could have said, I'm too bad. He could have said, I've done too much. He could have said, I've murdered and I've stolen. He could have said all kinds of things. But Paul humbly come before God and said, here am I. Now Paul is referred to one of the greatest Christians of all times. And we read his books in the Bible. We could have said, not me. But when we encounter Jesus, and Jesus changes our life, he changes our hearts, changes our ministry. We can't do anything but say, okay, Lord, what's next for me? I, I, I appreciate you saving me. I appreciate you forgiving me. I appreciate everything you've done for me. And then he says this. He said, this is my church. This is my church. Serve it. Unify it. Give to it. Make the church the body of believers. Do you know, I've said this many times, but the church, the worldwide church, is the largest volunteer organization on the planet. That's overwhelming. What Jesus did, instituting the church, changes people's lives. It changes people's lives, not with medicine, and not with intellect, but with spirit. Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes alongside us, it changes us, it helps us, it gives us hope, it gives us identity, and allows us a place to serve. So I want to give you something today. In eye service, I want to give you some blessings that when you serve, when you serve others, when you serve the church, what does it do for you? The first thing, serving allows us to discover and develop our spiritual gifts. I've heard, I've asked, People have asked me this question many times. I, I don't know what my spiritual gift is. I don't know what it is that God wants me to do. I just, I just do my thing. And, and a spiritual gift is not a talent. A talent is something that you're good at. A talent is something that you were good at before you were a believer. If you're a good singer, your spiritual gift may not be singing. It may be a talent. A spiritual gift is something that God himself, through the power of the Holy Spirit, gave to you when you gave your life to Christ. And here's the thing, if we do not exercise those gifts, sometimes we will never know what those gifts are. And here's another key. Others will know what that gift is probably way before you do. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12 compares the church as the human body. Just like our bodies are made of many different parts, the church is made up of many different parts. Now, I love that because that causes unity to the body. Diversity brings unity. Wouldn't you hate everybody being in the church just like you? Everybody having the same talents as you? Everybody doing the same thing as you? We'd have a one-dimensional church. 
but what God says that he brings into the church who he wants into the church. And this is a cell group to a larger church. But God brings to Glenville who God wants Glenville to be in the church. And he has gifted you. So when the church is automatically gifted by God and placed by God and we serve God out of our gifts, our church is a body working well and working strong. But many of us have had physical problems before. Simple, simple problems. That once a problem takes place within your life, the whole body is goofed up. How many of you guys have had a bad back? When you have a bad back, nothing works, right? You can't even stand. You can't walk. It, it hurts. How many of you had a broken finger or a broken arm or a broken hand or a broken wrist? Everything stops. Everything changes. Listen, the church is just like a body that is not working in perfect harmony. Something else has to come up to take over what God has in place within you to serve the body of Christ. So serving allows us to discover and develop our spiritual gift. And then serving also allows us to experience God's miracles. I love this story in John chapter 2, and you've heard this story many times. Jesus and his disciples were at a wedding, and they ran out of wine at the wedding. And old mom comes up and says, Jesus, come on, dude. We need some wine. I mean, we ran out of wine. But here's the miracle. Jesus told the servants to fill the buckets or the barrels with water. And they filled it to the brim with water. Then he says, go distribute to the guests. They distributed the wine or the water to the guests. And the guests said, this is the best wine that we've had most people serve the best first, but you serve the best last. Let me ask you a question. Who witnessed the miracle? Was it the people drinking the wine? No. It was the servants that Jesus said, fill the barrels with water. They knew what was in the barrel. The, the guests didn't. The owner didn't. Jesus did, and the servants did. And they did what Jesus asked them. And when they did what Jesus asked them, everybody else was blessed. But they didn't get to see the miracle. They didn't get to witness what Jesus did. And sometimes when we serve, we get to step back and we get to see what God is doing. We get to watch people's lives being changed. We get to watch God doing great things because we're serving. Because we're doing what God has asked us to do. So sometimes in our life, when he tells us as his servants to do something, as insignificant as putting water in a barrel, as insignificant as serving in this ministry or to doing this for someone, we have the opportunity to witness what God can do through us and in us. The third thing is serving allows us to experience the joy and peace that comes from obedience. Comes from obedience. When you know what God has asked you to do and you're obedient to him and you say, okay, Lord, this is what I want and this is what I'll do. In 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 10 and 11, it says this. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks... Let him speak as the oracle of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. When you serve, you're doing it because Jesus wants you to. Now, here's where burnout takes place when we do it because we have to. Or we do it because nobody else will. We do it because I've asked. And sometimes nobody else will step up and nobody else will do, so we get burned out. And that's not obedience. That's legalism. I have to, so I'm going to do it, do, do. And what obedience is, is I'm going to do what God wants me to do. But when everybody else does what God asks them to do, it experiences joy and not burnout. Peace 
instead of resentment. And when we come to church with joy and peace and get to serve, not out of obligation, but because of love for Christ, it gives us peace that comes from God because we're saying yes to what he's asked us to do. Number four says, serving helps us to belong, to, to be more like Jesus. We shift our focus off ourselves onto serving others. We begin to see others as Jesus sees them and to see Jesus in others. In Matthew chapter 25, verse 40, it says, And the king will answer him, say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, insomuch as you did in one of the least of these, my brethren, you did to me. When you serve, when you help, what you're saying is, I want to do this not because of who I am, but I want to serve because what Jesus has done for me. And Jesus is saying this, if you give even water to one of the least, you're doing it for me. How many of you guys have kids? And you know that if somebody shows my children respect, honor, love, and they care for my kids, you know what they're doing? They're caring for me. When I look at you and you respect what God has given to me and my children, and I say what you have done for them, you've done for me. You've respected me. So I want to honor you. And Jesus is saying, listen guys, serve me. Whatever you've done for the least of me, you're doing it for me. You're being my voice piece into the church and into the community. So it's an opportunity for us to be more like Christ and to get closer to Christ. And in serving, increases our faith. In serving, increases our faith. As we move out of our comfort zone, God increases our faith by revealing new potential in ourselves and in his church. When we see what we can do in his power and the work within us. And here's what he's saying. You may be saying, I don't know if I can do that. I've never done that before. Right, Steve? He told me today, I got to do drama in the children's department. I'm not going to win any Academy Award for this. But you know what you did? You were willing. Now, I'm sure it was terrible, but at least you were willing. <laughs> you know what? And that's exactly what we have to do. I may be out of my comfort zone. I may have never done that before. But you know what? When we are stepping out to do something that God wants us to do, you may be doing something for the first time that God is saying, I want to bless you. I want to honor you. I want you to realize that you can do that. You can do something that you didn't think you could. And when you do things that you don't know you can do, what happens is it is increasing our faith and it steps us out of our comfort zone. Ephesians 3.20, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think according to the power that works in us. When we are willing, God is able. And the last, serving allows us to experience God's presence in new ways. This is personal. Because you get to experience God using you. You know, one of the most important things that we need as a person is purpose. And when God gives us a purpose, in other words, there's a divine moment in time where God interacts with your life and somebody that needs you, God puts you two together. And God allows you to help them. It gives us purpose. It gives us, wow. I am not just here to make money. I'm not just here to sing songs. I'm not just here to take up a seat. I am here for a purpose. And when God allows us to have purpose and a presence within God's purpose, what God does, he smiles at us. It's encouraging we encourage others when they find healing in their life. And you know, we have all kinds of doctors that can heal. But you know what most families, most couples, most kids, they need an inner healing. They need a spiritual healing. The first healing that they need to have is the healing of forgiveness within their soul. They need Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And that's the church. 
And then sometimes going through life, and I can look across this auditorium, and I could point in every section individuals that are going through so much stuff right now that they need God to intervene and heal their marriage. It's not a secret. The longer you go without God in the center of your life, the more healing you need to take place within your life. And sometimes the church, we don't want to deal with the ugly, the underbelly of all the junk. But you know when somebody is struggling and they come into the body of Christ and you've had so much junk within your life, you've gone through the same stuff, they need somebody to say, I need help. And we can walk within their life and we can give to them the spiritual healing, the loving healing, the Word of God that can change their life. And when they start their journey after healing, what takes place is it gives you hope. You get to experience the greatest joy. It's bigger than a paycheck. It's bigger than an attaboy. It's somebody's life changed because... God puts you in the midst of their life and you got to receive that blessing. So we make all kinds of sorts of rational explanations for not serving. We can say, I don't have time and I don't know what I would do and I don't have the spiritual skills to contribute or they don't need me. Look, everything's covered. There's always somebody in the nursery. There's always somebody greeting at the door work in a classroom. There's always somebody cleaning. There's always somebody singing. There's always somebody in the band. There's always somebody doing everything that I am watching. But we don't realize that somebody has been doing that for years. We don't realize that that somebody is tired and that somebody is burned out and that somebody has been in the ministry for 15 years and he is burned out and he is done. Done. What do we do? What would we do if we didn't have our volunteers? What would we do? What would our church look like? What would we be? See, if we didn't have our volunteers, this church would not be here. Lives would not be changed. Our volunteers, the people that serve this church, you make this church. And I say thank you. But we're not done. We have to do more, greater. We have to do things that only God can do. But the reality, the Lord doesn't just call us. The Lord equips us. The Lord wants to do things through us. But what the Lord wants more than doing things through you. You ready for this? He wants to start in you. I'll volunteer for this, or I'll volunteer for that. But if the Lord just gets you to say, yes, I will do, but there's not a transformation in us, we may do for about a month, a couple semesters. But if the Lord changes your heart, and understand, you are serving God. You're not serving the church. You're not serving a ministry. You're not serving the pastor you are serving the head of the church, and that is Jesus. He wants to do something great through you. But before he can do something great through you, he has to start in you. He has to start, I desire to serve. I desire to help. The greatest thing that you could do is to give help to somebody that's in need. Whether it's in the nursery or whether it's in the parking lot, or whether it's in a flower bed. It's serving. It's serving. You know, the scripture that we read, verse 16, according to the effective working by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Everybody doing something changes everything. Let's go to Lord in prayer.